So how does it feel to be alive at this time on this planet with all this crazy going on? Well, whether you feel like getting off or staying for the ride, <laughs> one thing is for sure is that it's fascinating, isn't it? If we were simply the observer, if we would just like, if we just elevate our consciousness just a little bit, just pan out from your own personal experience and interactions, just pan out a little way and have a look at the planet right now. Have a look at all that's going on with you, with everyone else, with it all. How do you feel about that as you pan out? It's pretty exciting. No one can deny that change is required. We need so much change on this planet. And most people have been praying for those changes, even if they don't realize they're in prayer. If they, even if they don't know the value of that sacred connection and they don't have that label for it. In their heart of hearts, when they witness, when they observe, when they see all of those things in the world that they know are not right, they are not in alignment with truth, they're not in alignment with nature, they're not in alignment with who we really are as human beings. And when we see that and we experience that, we make a prayer. We say to ourselves, in the quiet mind, or in, even sometimes in the busy mind, stop, enough. Let's change this. This isn't okay. We need a solution. We need a different way of doing this. These systems aren't supporting the planet and her people. We need to break all this down and rebuild it. We've all been saying that whether quietly in our reactions and our responses, in those quieter moments with ourselves, in our inner world, or whether when we're hanging out with friends, relatives, or you know, even in our bigger relationship with the world around us, we can't not be moved into having a reaction and a response to what we see. And our reaction and response can do one of two things. Well, it probably does lots of different things actually, but just to clarify the point here, we can become so depleted, so exhausted, so overwhelmed by the sense that we are powerless to change these things. When we feel powerless, when we feel like we're the victim, victim of all these circumstances, when we feel like others have authority over us and we're not in our own power, in our own authority, that we're being dictated to, that we aren't making our own choices and uh, we aren't living in a coherent way. We're not living in uh, integrity in our own integrity. When we feel all that, we can be very depleted in energy because we don't quite know what to do. It just feels too much. It just feels so overwhelming. It just feels like it's never gonna end. It's only gonna get worse. And actually, depression comes from that. We just get depressed like something heavy is pressing down on us so much and we haven't got the power to do anything about it and so we, it depresses us. And then, and then, and then we're, we're unable to do anything, okay? Or the other, the other, one of the other, the other things I guess is we get angry. We get angry, why not? Let's just, let's just shout and scream or, or boil inside, you feel your blood boiling, you know? Particularly when things trigger you personally. 
maybe your trigger, your big triggers of your heart of hearts is when people hurt the planet or animals or children and you're just like, how dare this be happening? What can I do? And, and your fury, your rage, this passion, this power, rah, and you really want to do something with it. And maybe you do, maybe you find outlets for that. And maybe that's solution focus, and maybe that's progressive, and maybe that really, really helps. And then there's that other way. There's that way of observing what's wrong, knowing it's wrong, sensing what's wrong, because it doesn't sit congruently with you in your heart. And your heart knows truth. Your heart is a place of absolute knowing. And so when we get far, far away from our human nature, our kind of natural nature, the further away we get from that, the more incongruent we get. The more of a, uh, inco the less of a, a cohesive energy frequency we hold. We can become more and more at odds with our true self. And so when, when we're in our hearts, when we're in that place of being stirred, you know, we know that it isn't okay. Then we know that it's detrimental to those that we see suffering. And yet we are in that moment or at that time powerless to do anything about it. No amount of rage is going to help. No amount of just hiding under the duvet because we can't cope with seeing it anymore. We're so sensitive. We feel it so, so much. All of that makes the heart ache. And the heart can process so much. The heart's amazing. We're going to talk more about that. Okay, but in those moments, you can be really in your power. Because these are specific, poignant points of reference that are being triggered, not just by you alone, but with all your brothers and sisters, your fellow human beings. And so what happens when we feel that deep sense of this needs to change, is we send the heart then in this coherent vibratory pattern, sends out a message to the universe, to the guiding systems, to source, to God, to whatever label you like to put on these ever expanding networks of energies on and on into infinite space, omnipotent power, the power of grace and that communication that us for change is heard every time, every time. It cannot be not heard, it's a law. It's always heard. And not only is it always heard, it's always answered, always. There always has to be an energetic exchange from <laughs> that transmission of energy that you send out in your thoughts, in your feelings, in your heart moment of sharing, your prayer. All of that energy gets a response. When you have that relationship of knowing and trusting and being consciously aware that the thoughts that you have, that you're, the feelings that you have, that the communication that you're engaged with is one with a much greater field of information and intelligence than we can actually imagine as human beings currently with our very limiting perspectives on things. But all of those 
interactions are building an energy transmission to support a great awakening here on our planet. Like our questions are being answered, our needs are being met, our deep, deep desire for change on all levels on our planet has been heard and is being responded to. And so these energies are filtering in, coming in bit by bit in waves. They have been doing for a long time now. And so opening up to allow yourself to receive that is what we're here to do currently. It's a little bit like, you know, um, you really need something, okay? You think, oh, I really, I, I, let's think of it as you're going to your neighbors to ask them, if you're just about to cook the dinner, got everything you need, you realize you haven't got an onion. Okay, so you go to your neighbors, knock on the door, see if you can borrow an onion off them. Okay, and so you knock, knock, they open the door and you say, can I have an onion, please? Do you mind if you've got one I could borrow or whatever the conversation is? Really, really need this right now. Can you help? Okay. But before they have chance to interact, to, to, to give you the onion, to give you their response, you shut the door again. What? <laughs> so they've opened the door. They're listening to you. They're about to engage in the conversation to provide you with that much needed thing that you're asking for. But before they respond, you shut the door. Makes no sense at all. No sense at all. So in a way, that's kind of what a lot of people do in their relationship with these greater guiding wisdom and intelligence systems that are all around us. In our interaction on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis, we are transmitting information, asking for our needs to be met, our personal needs, planetary needs, global needs for global change. And then when when the information starts to come back <laughs> to support that, we shut the door. We shut the door. Hmm. In what ways do you shut the door? Do you trust that help is there? Do you trust that help can come? Do you trust that you deserve that? That you're worthy of that? That there is support and help readily available with the small things like the onion or the big things, planetary change. For the universe, it's no different. You know, the universe with this immense energy, it really couldn't care less whether it's, you know, giving you an onion or a complete planetary shift. It takes no more energy from the universe. The difference is in our perceptions. The difference is in how we filter things. The difference is in how we close the door. We close the door. So once we start to think of it from that perspective, we can start thinking about how we can open the door. Open it. Or at least don't close it. I mean, in a way, it's it's all wide open, yeah? But we put things in the way. Usually distortions that are created by our smaller self. Okay? Those parts of ourselves that feel, you know, inadequate or unworthy or they doubt 
they doubt their connection to something bigger because what would that mean to to you if you were to really surrender into that to surrender into everything being perfect and there being this amazing flow that you could be in should you allow that would serve you and support you and put you in superposition, aligned, just in a state of being, in presence, where anything that needed to happen would happen, where whatever needs to get said would get said, where you are just a conduit for the light to travel through, to ground itself on this planet at this time. So there are many, many conversations that we're having all the time in our relationship with ourselves, with each other, with the planet, with the cosmos. What conversations are you having? Are they angry conversations? Are they defeatist conversations? Or are they conversations that say, this is what I observe is out of alignment, out of tune with our nature. This is what I see that does not support us as human beings. Let's see that change. I'm here to witness that change. I'm here to embody that change, to actualize that. Show me how, guide me. I see what needs to change. Help me to be that change in an embodied way so that I am empowered so that I know who I am and how to be. Try that. Let me know how you get on. Write me a comment. If that's useful. Is it useful? Maybe it is. Only you know. Only you know what you know. <laughs>